Hello from the children of planet Earth. In 1977, Jimmy Carter became the 39th President of the United States of America. The Apple II computer was sold to the public for the first time. The first Star Wars movie, Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, was played in the cinemas. The supersonic Concorde started flying between London and New York. Amid all this, NASA was preparing to launch its twin spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 2 was launched on August 20, 1977 from the Kennedy Space Center and Voyager 1 followed 16 days later. Their mission was to study the outer planets of our solar system. Both spacecrafts had cameras and instruments to measure cosmic rays, plasma waves, magnetic fields and more and spent two years in space gathering this data. Voyager 1 eventually started photographing Jupiter in January 1979 and made its closest approach on March 5th, followed by Voyager 2 on July 9th. The time-lapse recorded of Jupiter showed a period of approximately 60 days and captured the gas planet's humongous clouds along with incredible close-ups of Jupiter's famous storm and the great red spot like never before. Did you know that this famous storm is approximately 16,350 kilometers wide and is large enough to engulf our whole Earth? After the flyby of Jupiter, Voyager 1 reached Saturn in November of 1980, whereas Voyager 2 took a year more to make the same trip. In August 1981, it made its closest encounter with our second largest gas planet. Having completed its primary mission, Voyager 1 subsequently began its journey into the unknown. Meanwhile, the sister spacecraft set its course towards Uranus and Neptune. Voyager 2 reached Uranus in January 1986 and after roughly three more years, encountered Neptune in August 1989. After hurdling for a total of 12 years across our solar system, Voyager 2 started its own journey towards the mysterious darkness of the universe. On February 14, 1990, NASA's space probe Voyager 1 sent a photograph of the Earth captured from an incredible distance of 6 billion kilometers. Famously known as the pale blue dot, it remains the furthest photograph ever taken of the Earth. In case you are interested to know more about the Voyager missions, I would recommend you watch this video. Along with the scientific instruments, NASA had also sent a time capsule in the form of a golden record in each of these spacecrafts. More than four decades after the launch, the Voyager spacecrafts still respond to us. But such incredible longevity has come at a cost. The cameras that captured those stunning images have turned off and less than half of all the instruments still work. But even with all that, NASA expects to lose radio communication by 2025. While they won't be able to beam information back to Earth, the Voyagers are going to continue sailing through space at almost 60,000 km per hour. The hope is that the golden records being carried by either one or both spacecrafts will be intercepted by another advanced civilization. If extraterrestrials do find the golden records, the first thing they'll come across is its cover, which looks a lot like this. It contains a handful of unique symbols that properly explain how to play the messages stored. This pulsar map also helps explain our location in the universe by triangulating Earth's distance from various neutron stars. To do this, they started with what is by far the most commonly found molecule in the universe, hydrogen. This diagram illustrates the transition between the two lowest states of hydrogen. Any spacefaring civilization will probably understand the properties of hydrogen enough to understand the message. When this transition happens, radiation is released with a definite wave period. In human terms, 
This period is about 0.7 nanoseconds. This wave period is used as the basic unit of measurement for the rest of the diagrams on the cover. These markings are binary codes that define the speed you would need to turn the record to get it to play. Correctly translated, we get over 5.1 billion hydrogen transition wave periods or about 3.6 seconds per rotation. At this speed, you would begin to hear greetings in 55 different languages. Witajcie, istoty z zaświatu. Tahiyatuna lil astiqa fi nujum. Ya layta yajma'una az zaman. Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Dharti ke baasiyon ki or se namaskar. Including the now famous line by Carl Sagan's own son, Hello from the children of planet Earth. This is then followed by music. It also has some familiar sounds like a train in motion and a baby crying. And on the other side, you will hear this sound. This sound contains all the image data for the photos and drawings. In this sound, NASA has managed to encode 115 images. Using the process described in the last few symbols on the cover, we can render the images. The top right symbol shows how the waveform data should be broken up, with each section of the waveform taking 0.008 milliseconds to play. And according to the symbol below that, each of these sections of data completes one out of a total of 512 scan lines that make up a completed image. It works similar to an old-fashioned cathode ray tube television. A replica of the first image is on the cover so that the viewer can verify that they decoded the signal correctly. Without much to erode it in space, the golden record is estimated to survive for a billion years traveling aimlessly through the Milky Way. It's impossible to say whether Voyager 1 or its twin Voyager 2 will ever be found and retrieved by another life form. But as Carl Sagan, who chaired the Golden Record project, once famously said, it would be impolite not to say hello. So, what are your thoughts on the Golden Record? And do you believe that any smart civilization will decode it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider clicking that lovely red button to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.